In this video, we will be going over all the methods of wireless communication and automation within Space Engineers, specifically pertaining to the Action Relay, the Broadcast Controller, and the Remote Control Block. This guide assumes that you at least know the basics of the game and is applicable to PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. The UI just might look a little bit different between the versions of the game. Okay, let's get right to it. The first block you'll need to know how to use is the antenna, or more specifically, broadcasting and the antenna. If I press this button here, you can see on the bottom left that it says hello world in chat. This is due to the broadcast controller, which I'll show later in the video, but this has been transmitted to me through the antenna. If I were to remove my antenna and go back up to my button, you'll see that no message comes through in chat. If I place down my antenna again, repress the button, the message comes through in chat again. Additionally, above my health, oxygen, energy, and hydrogen, you can see I have a little icon that looks like Wi-Fi. This icon indicates if broadcasting is enabled for your suit, which effectively means that the antenna that is built into your suit is turned on. If broadcasting is turned off, the antenna in your suit is turned off, and therefore you cannot send or receive signals to and from blocks. If I press O on my keyboard, broadcasting is toggled for my suit, as you can see by the icon changing here. The hotkey on Xbox is right bumper and X, and I believe the combination on PlayStation to disable it is right bumper and square. If I now press the button again, bearing in mind I've got broadcasting turned off, I don't get the message. And if I enable broadcasting again with the same button as before and then press the button, I now receive the hello world message. Effectively, as long as I am within range of this antenna and I have broadcasting enabled, I will receive this signal. So if I go over to the control panel, go to my antenna and turn the range right down to one meter, go back to my button, press it again, nothing. And now if I increase it from anything above one meter, we'll just say 10 meters, press it again and I now receive the message again. Antennas carry the signal of other antennas. So if you have an antenna at max range and that's not far enough for you, you can place another antenna within that broadcast radius to extend the signal. But I will have to start questioning why you're going that far. The first of the automation blocks we'll be looking at is called the Action Relay. The Action Relay allows you to remotely trigger actions from one grid to another. I've just placed down this gate here and using the Action Relay, I'm going to open the gate from a ship. So if I get an action relay, put it on my hotbar, I'm going to place one next to this gate and I'm going to place my zero cycle in front of it. I'm going to place another action relay on my zero cycle and also a control panel to edit the settings on it. It's very important to note that before we do anything with either action relay, we need to make sure that both grids have antennas on them that are broadcasting as the action relay utilizes your antenna network to trigger these remote actions. There is an antenna on the zero cycle here and we also have the one placed on my base earlier. So let's have a look at the settings for the action relay. Action relays are both senders and receivers. At the top of the settings, you can see you've got channel and you've got send signal. These are the two settings for sending. And then the receiving settings are also channel. And then you've got accept signal from with your options being owner, faction and everyone and setup actions. These are your receiving settings. When you press send signal, a signal is sent from this action relay to all other action relays on the same antenna network. And then it is only received by action relays that are on the same channel and are configured to accept signals from either the owner. So this action relay is owned by me and the action relay connected to the door is owned by me. Your faction, so all the action relays in your faction or everyone's action relays, which seems like a dangerous thing to be doing. And then finally, you have setup actions. Now, currently I'm looking at the action relay on my bike. However, we're using this action relay as a sender, so we don't want to configure any actions on here. We want to configure those actions on the receiving action relay. So we want to go over to this action relay and then go to setup actions. And you can see you've got an interface very similar to a timer block or a toolbar here. At the top, I'm going to go to my gate and set it to open close. And now you can see down here it says closed and the option is gate open closed. I'm going to go back to my bike. I'm going to get in the cockpit and press the button to edit my toolbar. Got my action relay and I've got a load of options. However, the three that you're mainly interested in are set channel, set channel and send signal and send signal. So for starters, I'm just going to click send signal. So number two will send signal on my current channel with that current channel being one. So now if I activate action number two in my hotbar, my gate opens. Now, you'll notice something very interesting. BuddyBot has come to say hello. So BuddyBot, who is now getting up very close and personal with me, is a demo drone designed by Keen, which I will link in the description of this video, to show off the action relay and the broadcast controller. Now, because his actions, specifically his action to follow, is triggered on an action relay set to receive on channel one, when we sent a signal using our action relay on channel one, it was received by both this action relay, which opened the gate, and the action relay on BuddyBot, which enabled his follow behavior. So whilst this is useful, as you can trigger actions at the same time, this also means you need to be careful about not overlapping your channels. And with that, BuddyBot goes in the bin. If I go back to my bike and activate action two again, that triggers the close command to close the gate. 
You can do more than just send one signal from one action relay to another. If I place a second action relay on my base, and I'm going to go over to this one and set this one to channel 5. I'm going to keep it on and accept signal from faction, set up actions, you see I've got this light, and I select the light and set it to toggle the light on and off. And I go back to my bike, get in the cockpit, edit my toolbar, and I'm going to remove the send signal we added earlier. Go back to my action relay, and we'll go back to the two options I didn't cover before, set channel and set channel and send signal. If we start with set channel, when I select it, I get the option to choose a channel. So I'm going to set this to channel 5, and you get to choose a name. So I'm going to call this set C5. And you can see on the hotbar at the bottom, it sets the label of the icon to C5. I'm going to re-add my send signal command on the right-hand side of my toolbar. And I'm also going to add a set channel for channel 1 and name it channel 1. So to recap, on number 2, I've got set C5, which sets to channel 5. On number 3, I've got channel 1, which sets to channel 1. I've named those purposely different, just so you can tell the difference. And then I've got exclusively send signal on number 8. So now, if I select number 2, this is now set it to channel 5. If I look up a little bit and press 8, you can see my light comes on. Press 8 again to turn it off. Now if I press 3, that sets my action relay back to channel 1. Press 8 again and the door opens. However, you can make it even more simple than this. Go back to my toolbar and just remove everything we've added and simply select my action relay, set channel and send signal. So this is going to be channel 1 and I'm going to label this one gate and then go back to my action relay, set channel and send signal. This one channel 5 and I'm going to call this one light. So on my toolbar, I have gate and I have light will immediately set the channel to the channel I set it to and then send the signal. So in our case, pressing 2 should immediately open the gate with no need to change the channel. And pressing 3 should immediately turn on the light. So if I press 3, light comes on. Press 3, light goes off. Press 2, gate opens. Press 2, gate closes. And I'll press them both at the same time. And we get a nice light show and an opening closing gate. If I place a button on my bike, it's worth noting that while you can trigger an action relay from a button, so if I go down here, set channel and send signal, channel one, which is our gate. And then if I name it gate, you'll notice that it just says action relay, set channel and send signal. I feel like this should be changed and it should say action relay and then hyphen whatever you set the name to, but it doesn't currently. So just be aware that when you set it on a button, it doesn't say what the action is. There are DLC buttons that you can label if that is easier for you. But if you clearly want to see what it is, your best bet is to do it from a cockpit where you can clearly see I have gate and light respectively. The broadcast controller is this block here, which I used earlier to send messages in chat. If I press this button, for example, you can see that it says hello world. Let's have a look at the settings for it. The first setting of note is broadcast target. Very similar to the action relay, you can select between your owner, your faction and everyone. So by default, it's set to owner only, which is you, the player that placed it down. You've got faction, which sends to everyone within your faction, and then you've got everyone, which sends it to everyone. Now, before you start thinking you can spam everyone on the server, as I demoed during the antenna section of the video, to broadcast any messages with the broadcast controller, you'll need an antenna on your grid, and you'll need to be within antenna range to receive it. So if I were to toggle the option to use antenna, go over to my button, you'll notice that it doesn't go through. If I go back to my broadcast controller, click use antenna again, press the button and we're back. Hello world. It should be noted that if I turn antenna off and get into a cockpit and then activate the broadcast controller on my hotbar, it still comes through regardless of the fact that the antenna is disabled. But regardless for the rest of the demonstration, we're going to have used antenna turned on. The rest of the broadcast controller is pretty self-explanatory as most of the function of this block comes from other blocks. You have the name of it, which I've set to tutorial. If I set this to, oh, uh, what's a good name for it? like and subscribe that sounds like a cool name and now if i press my button you can see that the name of it is zero and then like and subscribe zero being my username and like and subscribe being the name of the block and then below the custom name you have eight messages which you can each fill out so message number two can be like message number three can be subscribe message number four can be patreon message number five youtube member message number six can be random ad and we'll leave seven and eight alone for now so we have our six messages and you can see you have a button below to send random message. So if I press this, it will send one of the messages in chat, which was YouTube member. And also we have send GPS, which sends the GPS location of that block into the chat. And like all GPS coordinates sent in chat, they're automatically added to your list of GPS locations. So if I enable it in my list, you can see that the GPS coordinate is in the middle of the broadcast controller. So the question is, how do you trigger any of this to happen? So if we go over to my button and I've cleared off what I set up before and we go to the broadcast controller and select it, you can see we have all these options. The main ones we're interested in are transmit messages one to eight, send random message and send GPS. So I will set button number one to send random message. I will set button number two to transmit message one and button number three to transmit message two. 
So if I press button one, you can see it says random ad. Oh no, an ad. Pressing button two will transmit message one, which is still hello world. And I believe button number three was like, yes it is. And that's all very simple, but you can do much more than just trigger like and subscribe in the chat. I'm going to clear out all of my messages, all these stupid messages that some idiot put in here. And we're going to replace them with player detected, enemy detected, cargo full, and discord.gg forward slash 5mqsgxejw7, which is a completely random string of characters, I assure you. First of all, I'm going to grab a timer block, which I'm going to place down here, go over to my timer block. And by default, the timer block is set to trigger every 10 seconds. So I'm going to set up actions. I'm going to select my broadcast controller, I'm going to go to transmit message four, and then I'm going to select my timer block and set start. So every 10 seconds, the timer block will trigger message four and then start its countdown again. So if I press start, you can hear my countdown is going. And then after 10 seconds, it triggered my message in chat. Now, as fun as that is, I don't want to be spammed by my Discord link. So let's move on. If we grab an AI defensive combat and place it down, this block can be used to send messages when hostiles are nearby. So if we go over to its control panel, we toggle its AI behavior on so this block is active, and we can see that every five seconds it starts searching for enemies. The only other option we need to change here is target characters, as this will cause the AI defensive to react to hostile characters nearby. However, the rest of the options are to do with fleeing and shooting enemies. And for the purpose of this tutorial, we're mainly interested in getting the broadcast controller to tell us when an enemy is nearby. So if you hover over setup actions, you can see it says the first slot triggers when an enemy is detected. The second slot triggers when an enemy is no longer detected. So if we go to setup actions, go to our broadcast controller. And remember, we set message two to enemy detected. So that is now in slot one. And I'm going to set transmit message five in slot two. And then I will go back to our broadcast controller and in message number five, I'm going to put woo safe now. So I guess all we need now is someone to be our hostile. Oh, striker, you uh, gave me a fright in there. I guess you're volunteering to be our hostile. Good. OK, so striker is going to leave our faction so that he will appear as a hostile character to the AI defensive. There you go. You can see on the left, striker has left the faction and then momentarily enemy detected because there is now a hostile on our base. Isn't that fun, striker? Ow. Now, Striker, I need you to fly like two kilometers in that direction to prove this is working, okay? What do you mean, no? After some careful diplomacy, Striker has very kindly agreed to fly away, so I'll no longer be needing this. And when he gets around two and a half kilometers away, the AI defensive will no longer detect him and should trigger message five from the broadcast controller. Striker, how far away are you? I can't see. Striker has apparently crossed the 2K threshold. There you go, woo, safe now. Striker, how far away are you? 2.5, perfect. If we grab an event controller and place that bad boy down here, and we go over to its control panel, the event controller can trigger actions based on a hell of a lot of conditions. We're gonna start with the default one, which is cargo filled, and we're gonna set it to equal or greater than 95%. And then we're gonna set up our action to be the broadcast controller and to transmit message three, which if you remember was cargo full. Now, if we grab our cargo container and place it next to our event controller, go back to our event controller and you can see available blocks is small cargo container. If we select our cargo container by clicking on it and press add blocks, the cargo container should be added to the list of selected blocks at the bottom. So basically, when this small cargo container is above 95% full, it will trigger the action transmit message three, which is, as we've already established, cargo full. So if I go into my car container and I've conveniently enough got enough stone to fill it, I drag that into there and voila, cargo full. That simple. If I grab a sensor and put it on my hotbar, I'm going to place it right on the front of my broadcast controller and I'm going to go into its terminal and set up actions and set the broadcast controller to transmit message one, which you'll remember was player detected. If I go back to my sensor, I'm going to enable show on HUD here, go up to info and tick the box next to show sensor field range. You can see that this box has appeared over here. This is the range that the sensor will detect in. So if I walk into here, it will trigger player detected. If I walk out, back in, player detected. You can figure the size of the sensor with these options here, and you can choose what kind of things it detects here. So by default, it's set to detect players, but you can change it to floating objects, ships, large grids, stations, subgrids, asteroids, and whether or not it detects its owner, friendly, so people in your faction or friendly factions, neutrals, and detect enemies. The amount of things you can do with this is very high, just like the amount of things you can do with the event controller are. So feel free to experiment with the sensor, the event controller, and the broadcast controller to get the kind of outcomes you want. 
Let's pretend we're in a hypothetical scenario where I've run out of jetpack fuel and my mining ship is too high for me to get up to it. Effectively, what I'm asking is, how can I have full control of my ship whilst I'm not in it? Simple. You need three blocks, an antenna, a camera. It's not really required, but it'd be very useful. And finally, the remote control block. So if you fly out to my ship, we'll place these blocks on it. So I want my camera somewhere at the front of my ship. You can see that it says the word camera on it. This indicates which way is the top. So you want to place it this way around. If I go up here, I'm going to place my antenna. Obviously, this can be anywhere on the ship, but this is required so you can connect to it. As long as you as the player are within range of this antenna, you are able to connect to the ship. In fact, you can even edit the settings now. If I go to my terminal and at the top, you see you've got the drop down for zero. I can select zero minor two and I can configure the settings on it. For example, I could turn off the spotlights. I could turn off the hydrogen thrusters, which would not be a smart idea while I'm still on top of it. I could turn the drills, which you can hear. But if I wanted full control over it, I need to place my remote control block down. So you want to place the remote control block like you would place a cockpit. So I've got my cockpit facing forward the same direction as my camera and facing that way. I want to have my remote control block placed in the same orientation for when I control it. And now if I jump back down here and go back to my terminal, press remote access at the top, you can see I have two grids. That is zero minor two and static grid, which is the base we're stood on. You can see next to it that it has status. So zero minor two has connection stable. Ownership is correct, which means I own all the relevant blocks. And the most important option is remote control is ready, which indicates the grid has a working remote control block, which as you can see, my miner does and my base doesn't. So if you're ever having problems connecting, this should help you work out why. If I press control, if I start moving my mouse, you'll see that my mining ship is moving around. Like you would with any cockpit, you can add functions to your toolbar. So if I add my camera to it and then use it, I can now see myself, hello, and I have full control of the ship as long as I'm within antenna range. Like when you're in your suit, you can toggle off your antenna with a button press. So if I do that now, you can see that I immediately get disconnected. And if I go to remote access, it's completely off the list because I can't broadcast to it. If I fly back over to it, get in the cockpit, press the button to re-enable my antenna. And now if I go back to my terminal remote access, I can take control of Zero Minor 2, which is probably a bad idea whilst I'm stood on it. If you're interested in how to use all the AI blocks, I did a video where I go through every single one and how to use it, which will be linked on the card here. And if you're interested in making custom turrets, I've also done a video on that as well. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel to see more Space Engineers videos like this one. A special thanks to The Whisk Man, Hamish Drowner, The Wildcat, Tarantula Fudge and Sommet. Thank you all for your support.